So for this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at really simplifying doing multiple layer masks in Photoshop. So here we are in Lightroom and we got our first ambient image. This is what we're looking at right here. Now for this example, I'm going to show you the benefits of using a circular polarizer filter. Okay, so if you notice the glare over here on the floor, but there's no glare over here. This is the result right here of using that circular polarizer filter. So what I did is I had to take two ambient shots because when you rotate your circular polarizer, you're able to control certain aspects of the frame is how that uh, filter is set up inside it. I don't exactly understand how it works, but here is the second ambient layer. And if you notice the difference there, look at right here when I turn that other layer on, but I had to take two because I was eliminating a lot of this glare on the right side of the image with this ambient layer. So we are going to make sure that we bring both ambient layers in. But that is just a, something that you can do if you have that circular polarizer and you need to pull glare out of um, two opposite sides of the room. Just take two ambient layers and we're going to blend them in as if they were just any other layer in Photoshop. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at our first flash layer right here and how I'm running right now on my camera. If you can see right here, this is the flash bracket with that Godox V1 flash on top of the camera as well as my, as you can see here, I'm holding a my monopod with a shoot through umbrella and I have the 8200 in that bracket that's on top of that monopod. So I did two flash pops cross from each other now, I was looking, and if you notice how dark it is over here, let's zoom in a little bit and come over to this window. So when we blend these windows back in, these frames are a little bit too dark. So what I did was I just made, I just right clicked on that image and went and created a virtual copy right here. And then I just bumped up the exposure a little bit and I'll show you how we use this image in a little bit. That way they blend better because if you notice our ambient layers, really nice and bright, but this layer will match almost to a T that ambient around the windows. And you'll see what I'm talking about once we get into Photoshop. All right, so those are the images we need. Let's highlight that. We got the first one highlighted. Let's hold Command and click on each one of these that we need to bring in. Right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. All right, so now that we have all five layers into Photoshop, let's work on getting the ambient layer corrected first because if we toggle this off, the other ambient shot is underneath. So we need to make sure that we can eliminate that glare and just get ourselves down to just one ambient layer and I'll show you how we do that. So we're going to do just a complete layer mask, uh, command I to invert it and we're going to come up here to our gradient tool and we want to clean out this reflection so all we have to do is hold down right here with our gradient, come somewhere in the middle and then let off. And now if we toggle that on and off that's a nice blend of ambient light but we got, look at the difference of using a circular polarizer and not using a circular polarizer. We want to be able to show this hardwood floor, so that's why I suggest make sure you're getting yourself a circular polarizer. There's rarely a situation where I don't want it on my camera, so it literally lives on my lens, okay? So now that we have our ambient uh, composite done, let's highlight both of these by holding Command and clicking on the other one, and then right-click, and then come down here to Merge Layers. And that's just going to group those two and just merge them together. So now we have just one ambient layer. So we're knocking them out. We're getting, we're whittling down to where we only have a couple layers to work with and make this super simple. So we can shut that ambient layer off just as if we brought in just one ambient layer. So let's shut that one off and work on these two flash layers. So the one underneath is going to be our repair layer for that window. Okay, that's why I overexposed it on purpose, and you'll see why I did that in a second. So let's come down here and highlight that first flash layer, make a layer mask, command I to invert it. We got our gradient tool. So we want to start somewhere where that flash is uh, really prominent right here in the ceiling. You can see that. Just click and hold and drag somewhere in the middle, and when we got an even blend. Now, okay, we have a bunch of shadows under here but that's okay. Now, same thing, we're going to command and click, highlight both of those, 
and come down here to merge layers. So now we're down to just three. So let's turn our ambient layer back on. Let's just take and do a layer mask, command I to invert it, make sure white is selected, make our brush tool big, and let's just start painting back in natural ambient light around this window, getting rid of those natural shadows. And we can paint right over that just a little bit, you know, because we don't need them a super crazy harsh window pull. But if you notice, behind the faucet here, we have unnatural shadows from our flash in that paper towel roll. And again, look, we can paint right over the hardwood because we eliminated a lot of that glare using our circular polarizer. So we can paint right over that hardwood and not have to worry about introducing a ton of glare. That's why I love to make sure your ambient layer looks as clean as possible, whenever possible. So let's get rid of some of these natural shadows. And we can go back through and paint over those windows if we have to. But what we can do is we can bring up our flash repair layer right here. And, you know, basically this is what a window pull would do in a sense. So if we actually do change this to darken mode, we have to do a layer mask, command I to invert it. But we can paint over and bring back that window. I mean, it wasn't as direct as a normal window pull would be. But it looks a lot better than if we didn't do that. And we can maybe fix some of this glare just so it's not so harsh. That looks good if we toggle that on and off. Let's flatten this image. Now, here's another trick I like to do just to see if there's any... Uh, as opposed to using luminosity mode, which I'm getting away from because this method I think works better, let's just do Command J to duplicate the layer, come up here to Filter, Blur, and then Average. And of course, this is supposed to be middle gray if it is like a perfectly white balance, like if you were to shoot with a gray card and match it perfectly. So what we're going to do to correct this, to bring this back to middle gray, is come down here to our Adjustment Layer panel and click Curves. Click on the double or the middle eyedropper here and click anywhere in the image right like that and now we can toggle off that layer one and if we toggle on and off our curves layer you can see that that really pulled out a lot of that red because if you look at our curves layer it dropped the reds and it bumped the blues just a little bit so I never like it to be at a full hundred percent so I usually take it down to about 50 even maybe even 25 percent so if you toggle that on and off that still did uh, change maybe for this particular example we're gonna go 50 percent it just gets rid of that that orange that red hue that's overpowering because of the floor and the sun beating down in the room it will cast color where you don't want it so leaving that on again let's flatten the image hit OK because we don't need that layer that we duplicated and then command S to bring it back into Lightroom and I'm just going to do my interior final bump, adjust that exposure, maybe bring up those blacks. Looks like we had them down a little bit too much, but there you go. I hope this helped. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions, and make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm releasing tutorials all the time to help you grow your real estate photography business. Again, thanks for watching.